Hi, this is Arish from JetTechNews.com. This is a video series on Android programming. In this first video, we will have a look at basics of Android programming and we will create a simple allow word app. Android is a mobile operating system developed by Android INC. This was later bought by Google in 2005. Android is an open source operating system which means you can download the source code and modify and customize it to suit your needs. Android is built using Java programming language. So build an Android app, you need to be aware of Java language. Once you develop your Android app, you can distribute it on Google Market. This is free. However, you need to, you need to pay a one-time payment of $25 to be a to register as a developer. Let's look at architecture of Android app. I mean Android operating system. So there are four basic layers. The first layer is the Linux kernel. This provides all the low level drivers required for display or camera or the media management. This is a simple version of Linux. On top of that, we have libraries. These are built in C and C++. These provide low-level APIs to interact with the hardware. We also have Android Runtime and we have Dalvik Virtual Machine. This is where our Android apps execute. On top of that, we have application frameworks. These are the application frameworks built using Java. So when we build our own app, we use the API from these frameworks. And on top of all these, we have our application layer. This is our, this is where our Android app resides. Okay, so let's look at how the Java code is converted to Dalvik bytecode. In general, when we develop a Java application, our Java code is compiled into Java bytecode and this bytecode is executed within our Java virtual machine. But in case of Android apps, this Java bytecode is further compiled, compiled into something called Dalvik bytecode. This Dalvik bytecode is what is executed inside our Dalvik virtual machine. This Dalvik bytecode is in format .dex. For a developer, the compiling between the bytecode and Dalvik bytecode is all tra is all invisible. So developer will only write Java code and the Android SDK takes care of converting it to a Dalvik bytecode. Our Android app is distributed as an APK file. APK means Android package. Our APK is a combination of two things. First is our Java code which takes care of creating our APIs using our using APIs to develop our application. The second part is the resources. The images, XML files, the strings all come into resources. Alright, we are ready to set up our develop, uh, development environment. We need to first download SDK. To do that, you can go to Google and search for Android SDK download and click on this first link that comes. Instead of downloading SDK separately or Eclipse and no other APIs, you can download a something called bundle. When you download this bundle, you get a zip file. When you unzip that file, you get two folders. Eclipse and SDK and SDK Manager. SDK Manager is application we use to download APIs, down documentations, sample. By default, you will get one latest version of the API, that is the platform. So, as of now, API level 19 is the latest and I downloaded 18. All right. So you can open SDK and you can download even the older version of Android API and emulators as well. 
So next step is to open our Eclipse. So you can double click on the Eclipse.exe file. You will get this empty editor. To create an Android app, you click on New and Android Application Project. In this wizard, first you need to provide the application name. This is the name that will be displayed for your clients when you go to Google Market or the Play Store. Let's create a low world app. So it auto populates the project name. This project name is used only within Eclipse. The next is a package name. This package name needs to be unique. This is what identifies your application in the Play Store. Google Play Store that is. So you can use a domain, the reverse domain name. For my example, I will use com.jtechnics.android.allowerapp. And the next set of uh, settings say, uh, show something about API to use. So when develop an application, you can specify what is the minimum required SDK. Do you want to support older version of Android which people are still using? So if I say Android 2.2 is the minimum I will require. So where uh, people using less than that like 2.0 or 2.1, they will not see this app when they go to Play Store. The target SDK is the SDK which uses, so our app will use all the functionalities available on 4.3 that is API level 18. This compile width is for our Eclipse setting. So for this rest of the wizard you can click next. Next. This is the logo of our app. Then in the last screen it asks for an activity. Either to create a blank activity by default is blank, you can select that and click next. It sets a default activity name. Activity is nothing but a screen in the app. So this is a default app, the default screen that needs to be displayed. Click on finish. It takes a while to create the application. So once this application is loaded, it is all set to be executed. To test our app, you need to create a Android virtual device. So you can see our source code. There is a source folder and we have a resources folder where our, all our resources are stored. So under resources, what the drawable folder means, our images. The layout is a set of XML files. The layout is XML files that defines how our view, the UI should look like. So if I open this layout file, you can see it has a visual graphic layout of our all over app. It has a title and there is a text. Then on the left side we can see a lot of widgets available. You can drag and drop them onto your UI. Similarly, you can also go to XML view and add your UI here. See, we have text view and a button. These two is a child of a relative layout. We will get back to the details of layout later. So, if we go to our, there is only one Java file in our app, it is mainactivity.java. So here, when we start our app, it calls our onCreate method. Our class is a child or a subclass of activity class. So in our onCreate, we call super of onCreate to create our activity. And the next line is set content view. This means 
set the content view to this layout. So here you notice there is a R dot layout reference. What is this R? This R is a auto generated Java file that you can see are under the gen folder. The R dot Java. So R dot Java is auto generated and we should not modify it. R dot Java is actually a reference to our resources folder. In our resources we may have images, XML file and string values even that in XML file. To reference this in our Java, Android provides this R dot Java. So to reference to our layout, we are saying R dot layout dot activity main. This references to resources layout and activity main dot XML. So what this set content view says is pick up this layout and set this as my content view in the app. Let's create a Android virtual device. I will delete and create a new one. So you can open this Android virtual device manager from this icon on the toolbar. Then click on new. You can provide some name. I say my phone and it comes with set of devices available so you can pick any one it has small size uh, phones or bigger tap kind of uh, phones so I'll pick a simple one say which has item width of 480 and 800 then there are some settings to create a virtual device and only thing we need is a SD card memory. This emulates as if our phone has a 10 MB SD card. Click on OK. So my phone is created. You select that and click on start to start our virtual device. To start our virtual device it takes a while. Alright so we have our Android virtual device running. So you can see it looks just like our phone. So next we can deploy our allowed app onto our phone. To do that, right click on our project, run as Android application. So this will pick up any virtual device currently running and will deploy our app onto this. If you have a real device, you can connect that to your system and you can test it on that as well. So you can see in the console, it says installing a lower app.apk. This .apk file will contain .dex file and our resources. So once the app is installed, it will automatically open up. You can see our allowed app is installed there and it opens up with a title allowed app and a text allowed and a button. If you click on the button, there is nothing happens. So let's look at how this is packaged. If you, In the Eclipse, if you go to bin folder, there we have something called classes.dex. This is our Java class and we have resources.apk this is all our resources our images and the xml files and we have android manifest xml this is at our root as well this is what has gone into our bin so all this is packaged into .apk file this is what distributed you can copy this onto your uh, phone also and execute it so Android manifest.xml it defines what is our Android app all about. So it says which is the SDK to use, which is the minimum required, and we have application tag which specifies the icon to be used, the label of the application, and the theme. This is currently we are using a default theme that comes with the Android SDK. The next activity is say which activity to load on startup so we are currently one activity that is the main activity with our package name 
so when android uh, installs and executes our app this is a java file that's executed first and as was as we saw our java file will pick up our layout and displays the layout so for our allow word we created a android application and we created a virtual device uh, for our testing then we started our device and then deployed and run our android app creating device is just one time thing and going forward you just need to start the device and you can test your apps in the next videos we will look at more detail on how to create android apps thank you for watching please visit jtechnics.com for more videos